Welcome, everybody, to a 1v1 on Arena with the Poles. And who are the Poles against? The Poles. Meta is pretty far, pretty well established on a lot of maps with all these, well, all the civs we had for the last few years or last 20 years, depending. But the Poles just came out, and the Poles I've never seen on Arena before. So we have the last amigo. I'm actually going to change the name here so I don't confuse you. This is Madri. Madri on a Smurf account. And Madri is up against running. Now, I know what you're thinking. T90, it's pretty ridiculous that both players are not playing on their actual accounts. And yes, they're both 2K3 or 2K4 players who are playing on 2K2 accounts. Don't ask me why everyone has different accounts. That's just the way it is. I've even been guilty of it in the past. What are these trees, though? Are birch trees new? Sorry, I got distracted by the trees. I don't think I've ever seen these trees before. I've seen autumn trees. I think they added birch trees. Nice. Okay, so we've got birch trees. Is there spec chat in these trees? Can I find... Can I see what the players are saying? Do I have to look behind it? No? Okay. All right, fine. Fine, fine. So anyways, it's a pole war. Um, and it's it's great that we have birch trees. I'm, I'm thrilled. Such a good addition. And um, the priorities certainly straight over there. Uh, in the dev workshop. But what do you see in a pole war? Someone remind me about their siege. Do they get siege onager? Let's think super late game. Anyone? Do they get siege onager? They don't. Okay. I think they get siege ram, right? It's important to note this. I'm skipping over a lot of stuff. I think they get siege ram. And then do they get bomber cannon? A lot of people are saying yes, they do get siege ram. I think the answer is no to Bomber Cannon. They do get Bomber Cannon. Okay. Now, I've talked about polls a lot today. We need to touch on their economy in a moment. We'll have plenty of time here. So YouTube, just, you know, trust me. There's a lot to cover. But skipping past their economy and thinking about their units. They don't get Paladin. They do get Arbalest, but the Arbalest are kind of generic. Or they're not special because they don't get the final armor upgrade. The main thing you're thinking about with the poles, based on what I've seen so far, is the winged hussar, which is a pretty cool unit. Only costs food, has trample damage. That's exciting. And then also the um, the unique unit, the obuk. So I genuinely have no clue what we're gonna see here. I think the meta of arena kind of suits the poles, and that you tend to go fast castle into scouts for relic control. But what that leads to, I have no clue. Greater. And the Civ doesn't get Halb. So, like, if, if someone's making Hussar, you can't just make Halb to counter that. You probably just make your own Hussar, right? I think so. I don't know. We're going to find out. Um, jokes aside, though, I think the trees look really nice. And, uh, well done. I mean, it's, it's nice that we can mix in small varieties like that into our game. Now, the cool thing about poles for fast castling is that you don't even need to mine gold if you don't want to to go fast castle. You can actually mine stone because you collect gold or receive gold while mining stone. It's not quite as fast as stone. It's at half the rate, but, but technically you could send three to stone, go fast castle, and never have to mine any gold. But I think I haven't worked through a build order. I think the timing on when you'd go to stone would have to be a little different than when you would normally go to gold because it's a little slower. And I think running's thinking about that right now. So... Uh, we'll pay attention to just how quick it is as they're bringing in a lot of food right now. But yeah, this is maybe the best way to determine what to do in a pole war because we don't have to think about the map too much. The map is arena, you've got stone walls. So on Arabia, someone might die too early. <laughs> it's kind of hard to know. Yeah, I have noticed that they screwed up arena. Uh, for some reason, in recent generations of arena... One side is not connected to wood for one player. I don't know why that is. But if you look at running space, I think running space is a bit worse compared to Madri. I mean, Madri deleted the walls in the back because it was blocking space. There's all this free space. Wood lines on either side. He doesn't need to worry about this area. It's not the biggest deal. You still start with stone walls. You still have a wood line, but it's a little weird. If you want to expand your eco, it's a lot easier for Madri. Because you have more space that's safe. Okay, Mithric says, I've tested a build order. You can go at the same time as gold in the regular fast castle. 
Yeah, but that that the math doesn't add up there because you don't collect it as fast. So I don't think you're correct on that. Right? If you're collecting gold slower than if you were to mine gold if you're doing it that way. So if you you might need to send one additional vill, but the build order would not be the same, right? At least I don't think so unless I'm I'm off here. I think I'm right on that. Uh, why not wall between the walls and the wood line to extend the base for blue? Yeah, you can eventually do that, but that's villager time. And then your villager's exposed against the scout. So at this level, the players want their villagers working. That's all. All right, they're both on the way up. And we actually have Madri going to gold with two villagers. Now, this is the proper time for this build order for any other sieve. But <laughs> running has been on stone for a while. Running came to stone two minutes ago. So it's actually going to have tons of stone and also is going to have plenty of gold. But you notice the food count's lopsided because of when the villagers started mining stone. Now, what I just thought of is if you wanted to go for some type of YOLO build, you could actually sell more stone to get more gold and then buy food. You know what I mean? How the players use the market. It's a little weird then because then... With those builds, you normally want a lot on gold for monks. And then you're mining stone. But I don't know. He is correct because the third vill compensates and FC goes well. Okay, important moment. And Madri wins that scout war. Those are always the coin flip. But no, the way he... what The reason I'm being nitpicky is because I was told it's the exact same build order. Which is not correct. <laughs> if you send an additional vill, that's the, not the same build order. You know what I mean? But I get what you mean. It's not too far off. But it's definitely not the same build order if you have to send an additional vill or go a little bit earlier. But it's tweakable, right? I'm just being... I'm a caster, man. I have to be specific. If I see something that's good, I can't just be like, that's good. I have to be like, that's good because of blah, 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 blah. I have to go down a three-minute tangent. It's, it's a blessing and a curse. Let's put it that way. Now, I like how they both made their farms next to their full work. Because you do get 10% 10, uh, 10 of your farm's food after that farm is finished. So that can help. And they both have clicked up here. It's just that Madri has preferred to have villagers on gold instead of going on stone. And I personally think... I mean, unless we're going to see a castle drop from running. And he actually sent another villager to stone. I actually think what running is doing is worse. Unless that stone's utilized... I mean, it can be utilized later. That's what's tricky. I would say I like it, though. I don't want to give you guys the impression that I don't think this is unique. I do think it's unique. And I think it's good that I'm unsure. And then I don't know if it's OP. Right? Running, making spearmen. Running, making scouts. He actually is playing pretty sloppy by his standards. He didn't get bidaxe yet. Oh, he's getting it now. He got howls there. I mean, you could try and turn this into a castle drop, and then I'd like what he's doing. And, oh, here he comes, here he comes, here he comes! Yes! See, now this makes sense, because you have some gold for whatever military you want to make, and then the fast castle, but now you're utilizing the stone. Yeah, so for what Madri's trying to do, Madri's just being a boomer boy, and he just wants to get control with scouts for relics, and boom. But, not running. Here comes running. Didn't have to mine any gold. And is going to be in a position to make some monks in siege. Would it be a strat for pulls to fast castle and drop a castle? Yep, that's exactly what's happening right now, Kale. You were just ahead of the game. There's the castle. I love how he drops it right on Madri's face. As close as possible. He's letting Madri know. <laughs> hey, I'm over here. And now, if Madri wants to stop this... Interesting. Madri deleted the monasteries, building one here. But yeah, if Madri wants to stop this, Madri would have to engage against it. I like how running has the spearmen behind the vills. Because Madri's going to think, wow, I'm going to engage. I'm going to get kills. Exciting. Ready. And that's not true. The vills don't have loom, though. Ugh. Also, Madri deleted the second monastery. So two monasteries were started and then deleted, which is just a waste of time and a few resources. So I don't know why that happened. I think he thought twice about it because the castle was going to be there. But then at the same time, why did you build the second one closer to the castle? I don't know. Maybe as part of a wall or something. 
Okay, so now these villagers are just out here. Just walking around. I have a... Ugh, I gotta get this kitten out of here. I'm sorry. I left the door open. One second. The kitten is tearing apart. Stop it! One sec. Arena is a half good modus. They started well by making the outer ring all trees, but forgot to finish it by having all the rest also be trees except for the TCs. Okay, I'm sorry. How did the scouts get through? Did, they, did he just shoot down the wall and run in there? Looks like a villager was killed. I don't know why I don't learn to close my door. But yeah, the kitten came in here and started trying to tear, the, tear apart the wall to get my attention. So, got my attention. And man, I really like this build from running. Nivido with 54 months. His arena is half as good. Wait, what? Arena is a half good modus? They started well by making the outer ring all trees, but forgot to finish by having the rest also be trees, except for the TCs. Okay, Force Nothing fan. Hello, Nivida. Long time no see. Okay, I thought that was an additional blacksmith, and I was really confused. It's going to take some time to get used to this stuff. That is a full work, and we're going to see running uh, behind this pressure, if you could call it pressure, try and boom. And also is trying to get the relics right now. I mean, the castle's doing... It's definitely applying pressure, and it's making it awkward for Madri, but there's no real like, killer blow coming from behind this. And Madri is aware of this. Madri knew the relics were out there and is now looking for the monk, but we'll miss out on this one. That's relic number three, actually. And this could be relic number four. Man, running has made this look really easy. And look at his food count. He's making farms around the full work, getting the food boost. What I like about the poles... Is that is it, it is a sieve that you have to play around its bonuses. And there are sieves who you don't that are kind of generic and you don't have to use their bonuses, right? Um and it's just so cool how running has we have one player playing like the poles, and we have one player playing like other sieves. And whoop! Look at that move from running. And he will lose the scout anyways, but he's gonna get one monk. He's gonna get two, and Madri, you're gonna lose the third one here, I think. And dead. Wow, three monks down. Now you have four relics at home. The economy's looking pretty good for running. Worth it. And look at this. This is so good. I Pay attention to the food count. I cannot stress this enough. When you make farms around this thing in the mid game, it is nuts. Oh, <gasps> No way, Madri. Okay, Madri spotted that one. That monk's closer, though, to the, uh, to the base from running. So running could end up getting everything. Watch the food count spike when these farms complete. Ready? And boom. Just skyrocketing, right? And he's going to make more of them. And also, they're very satisfying visually. They look really good. So, meanwhile, we have Madri over here. He's doing the same thing. He's tr still trying to make farms around these full works, as you should. Uh, both players were a little late with their wood upgrade. And Madri's going to get that now. And I think Madri just kind of overreacted. He was terrified he's going to get this relic now, but he was terrified that the castle drop would lead to siege and a lot of other nonsense that just never happened. And guys, it's really rare that you see high-level players get baited so hard. So I can see at any other elo, this being a really good strat. Because one of the most stressful strategies to face up against is the castle drop. Now, I'm not trying to encounter thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people to do this. I'm not trying to encourage you to castle drop people with poles. But also, you know, maybe maybe think about it. <laughs> You're welcome in advance if you play up against the poles because you, <laughs> you won't know what to expect behind it. And then if the meta becomes, all right, they're not going to do anything behind that castle, then you just actually go for aggression and then people get stumped. So, hmm. Does it make sense to not upgrade your farming eco in order to capitalize on the full work bonus? 
Okay, forgive my ignorance, but in what way does not getting farm upgrades help you? I I'm not seeing how skipping your Switch farm upgrades finger. helps you in this situation. Hi, T90. It was my impression, correct me if I'm wrong, that getting your farm upgrade helps you. Correct? Like, do you get 10% of whatever your farm's food is going to be long term? Like, if you get the second farm upgrade, your food is going to last. You're going to have more food on the farm. So you get 10% of a stronger farm, a higher number, correct? That was my impression. So I think you get more food if you get more farm upgrades. So it makes sense to get your farm upgrades big time here. Yeah. Okay. So my impression was correct. Yeah. So that's the way it is. So it definitely makes sense. Because we're going to see Madri, I think, click up to Imp here. He has had a villager lead. And Madri... This is interesting. Wait a second. We just had running research the unique tech. And forgive me. I think it's like the Shaletic. I, I forget the exact name of it. It's been... It's still rather new to me. And with the unique tech, your knights cost 60% less gold. So now we're seeing knights come out. So it's like running wants to go all in knights with this control. And he might actually be able to accomplish that. Now he has to break through these buildings first. Oh, but there's a hole. And running with the micro. Okay, running loses the knight. Madri lets the knight come in. Madri then adds a stone wall. Interesting decision here. Because what's happening from this... Is that Madri is already going to go for Pike? At least I think so. I saw him getting infantry upgrades. Oh, what if he wants to go for his unique unit, though? Yeah. I feel like the Obuk might be the way to go here if you're in Madri's position. I feel like the additional knights... I mean, we'll see. But if they don't break in here, it might not be worth it. Even though they do cost 60% less gold. So you just build farms and delete them for insta-food? No, no, no. You have to complete the farm. So obviously, it doesn't really make sense to just complete a farm and delete it all the time. It's not five head, that'd be like negative five head. <laughs> As the knights are coming out. And that's a lot of knights, and they will soon have full upgrades, I think. But Madri's castle is going to be up in time. Madri's well defended. And I think this is going to be a really fun game. Because what, what's happening now is running's catching up with villagers. Because he doesn't have a TC going to Imp, like Madri does. But Madri's going to take all the map control. So I think running played this really well. But using the unique tech in this situation didn't make a whole lot of sense. But I want to remind you guys why I think that is. Because I brought it up earlier today. It's because the tech is 500 food, 300 gold. That's half of the Imperial Age upgrade. I feel like in most cases, it just makes more sense to go Imp. It's not like it even discounts your food price. Just go Imp, and then do something else. Or get the tech there. I highly doubt it's going to dominate Castle Age. Unless someone else is making some mistakes. What does Imp give you here? Well, it gives you Trebs. So you Treb this down, you get control again. It gives you Imp upgrades. And it gives you a head start to Imp upgrades. In this case, you're going to have probably three castles for Madri soon. So you start to make your unique unit. Imp is the perfect play for Madri to get this player off of his back. Now, what do you do if you're running? Do you continue to make knights? Do you go cavalier? He's going to add archer ranges now. This Civ doesn't get hand cannoneers, right? We're going to see elite obook. And based on what I know about this unit, this unit shreds cavalier and knights. Especially units that don't get the final armor upgrade in Imp. I think Madri is going to destroy running, but it depends on how many knights running makes. I don't have a lot of experience seeing this. I'm running into some problems analyzing the game. There you go. There's a running joke for people that wanted to see it. Also, Gold's being forward will be an issue for him. There he goes. He's just got off work. Call. Now back to AB2. Nice, nice, nice. Tell your boss I said hello. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. I do still have a mustache. I look precisely like the T90 stash emote. I'm not going to use face cam. Sorry. Loom. Loom. All right. That's a lot of knights. Holy. Now, here's a question. Does the value percentage on capture age show a lesser amount because he didn't pay as much for the knights? You know what I mean? Like, I'd have to do the math. I feel like the way capture age is built, it might just say there's X amount of knights and it might use the full knight cost. 
I don't know if that's adjusted. Okay, so we're going to see archer ranges and crossbow just completed. So the plan is to go arbalest. I do think arbalest would be the go-to unit against this unique unit, which is now elite. 10 plus 4, so it's 10 base attack. Decent armor, 95 HP. I think going onager here would be good with this. I don't know. It can't be that way due to the Berber bonus. Yeah, I guess I never thought about that with the Berber bonus either. That's a good point. It's probably adjusted. Because that's a lot of knights. So Cavalier's on the way. Uh, Alpost has been sitting here this whole time. I think that's a little sloppy. You're letting your opponent see what you're up to. Or what you're not up to. And Madri's going to go in for the kill. He only has one relic, but he has 63 military. And this unit is really freaking strong. I think you, you pull the siege forward, wait till you have three or four trebs, and then you force fights, force the enemy to fight you. That's exactly what's going to happen here. Miguel did this for Stark on Arabia. Stark was going full arbs, and by the time Stark tried to attack, Miguel was spamming Cavalier out of six stables. Yeah, but I think the order's wrong. I could be wrong. But I think the order's wrong. Like, switching into Cav to finish off a game is really good. But opening Cav... The counters are already there in place. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I also haven't seen a lot of Cavalier fight a lot of these Obooks yet. There's only one way to find out. And they both don't know. I, surely one person dominates this fight. But they're both like, well, I don't know. The unit's new. Let's see. I think the Cavalier are losing. Uh, it's a lot of Cavalier. Um... Think the Cavalier are losing. And if you think of the gold cost of Cavalier, even if you look at the new gold cost ever that after that tech, it's higher than the gold cost associated with an Obuk. So this is the stronger unit. Look at the KD though. <laughs> it is a stronger unit, but it's a cheaper unit. Significantly Yay. cheaper, I believe. I, I think, right? Yeah, it's gotta be. Overall, I think. But it it's really cool how we're at least seeing the fight, so we know. But this is good for the poles because the poles don't have halberdier. So the poles not having halberdier means that they're going to need a counter to a lot of knights. Uh, granted, these are also cavalier that don't get the final armor upgrade. So if it was poles versus any strong cav sieve instead of just poles, it would be a little bit worse for them. Okay. But this is where arbalest needs to come in. But this is also why I said... Like, the order of things is going to be worse for running. At least I think so. Because he doesn't have the units out yet. Or the upgrades. But he does have so many in queue. So I don't know, guys. This is crazy. Armor doesn't matter against Obux. At all, it doesn't matter? The counter to this unit would be range. Like, archers. Say, I know they strip armor away, but do they strip all armor away? I don't know. It's really hard for me to know how it works, right? Because it's such a unique wording. I think armor has to matter a little bit, right? Like, it's 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 one of the most important upgrades in the game. One armor per hit. It gets stripped away every hit. So, yeah, armor matters big time. Yeah, mar ma armor is huge. Plateboarding armor gives you so much. Okay, using some mobility here is running and probably thinks he should run away. But a bit of mobility here as well. Uh, there's so many castles, though. I feel like Madri should just win because he has his castle numbers, and these castles look really cool. And my point earlier is I think the Obuk should walk down the stairs as it's in queue and then pop out the front door. <laughs> Madri has 90 army! What is this game? Wah! Look at this fight! The monks are also helping. Running did not really take a good engagement to kill the Obooks. He just wants to hold the position and take out the Trebs. So he really is losing this fight badly. But he'll be happy to take the Trebs at least. And remember, he's sitting with the Relics at home. If he has more units in queue, then maybe he'll be okay. And now he does have Bracer on Crossbows. But he doesn't hasn't clicked Arbalest yet. And the Crossbows aren't even fighting. Oh no. Well, at least he can fall back to his castle. He's going to load into the castle. Madri's got to be a little careful here because his units are split up. 
in some ways, I'm rooting for Madri, and in some ways, I'm rooting for running here. But I can say, very rarely do you see this many military units, expensive military units in a game. But it's not really even that expensive. That's, that's why it would be expensive in other scenarios, right? But that's what makes this unique. Look at these hammer boys go! It's hammer time! Ready. I think straight Obuk is just the go-to. If it was Arabia, it'd be different because there's you can use your mobility more. These units are so cheap. And they're so strong for what they are. And they're melting. Everything. The other thing that's, that's interesting to bring up here is scalability of an army. Okay? So let's think about poles in a situation where they're not up against poles. Also, love the hammers hitting hitting the uh, stone wall there. Do you really want to commit heavily towards towards cavalier that are cheap but don't get the final armor upgrade? Probably not, right? Like I could see winged hussar being a thing, but I just don't see that unique deck being hugely dominant for poles. Because what what players always have in the back of their mind is how armies scale. And if the army doesn't scale well, you're not going to see it preferred a lot. I don't know. Certainly, I feel like the all-in knights and castle age didn't do much. Certainly, I feel like Arbalest needed to come in faster. The crossbows even are helping out a little bit, but still not enough of them. And the GG's call. The running just can't deal with the Obooks. And that was the first Polish versus... The, the Poles versus the Poles. The North Pole or the East Pole versus the West Pole. <laughs> um, and yeah, I mean, it's just... What's tough about this is, I think what really hurt running was the timing of the game. If you look at the imp timing, he invested in the unique tech, which is 500 food, 300 gold. And then he didn't... He made a lot of units, and they didn't find benefit there. I think if he still goes for Cavalier but he doesn't make the knights when he made them. It's a different game. And then he maybe has more time, sorry, to do other things. But man, like Madri just, he kind of remains calm. Granted, he didn't get the relics he wanted. And he's got one, two, three, four, five, six castles. And he just okay. spammed that unique unit. And people, <laughs> people, people either take what I say too literally or... They're joking, and I can't pick up on it. I, I don't think there's a West Pole Snack fan, okay? All right. <laughs> it, it's, you got you to gotta think about it. There's someone on the left and the right, okay? There's no North and South Pole in this game, so it's a, it's a very bad joke, okay? It's a very bad joke. I'll agree on that. But let's look at the resources collected in that game. Uh, there's the KD, which we could see during the fights. Um... But here's the resources collected. So we've got more wood and more food ultimately for running. And then, well, it's always interesting. So we had more stone collected for Madri, like a lot more stone collected, which led to him having more gold collected, which is cool. So if he didn't have that much more stone over the enemy, then he wouldn't have had any gold over the enemy. So I just feel like the gold was wasted in comparison by running. Um, just couldn't get it to work for him. So what we learned in that game is that in a pole war, go for the unique unit, right? Maybe, Isn't a pole sort of. Versus pole mirror just a game of billiards? <laughs> T90 think T90 down. Yes, maybe. But the other thing is that's really cool about the sieve, and this is my favorite part about the sieve, is what you can do with it when it comes to the stone and gold bonus. That is freaking cool. The fact that we saw castle drop into a pretty solid boom is really rare. And like I said, I think that that castle drop is going to freak people out. They're going to over-prioritize dealing with your castle. And then you can do everything else on the map. So that's mm -hmm. cool. It, there are some weaknesses for the Civ and more open maps because it's harder to utilize those bonuses. But from the farms and the full work to the castles, I think the poles are in a, a really unique Civ. And while I have complained, and rightly so complained about certain additions and changes in the past... I really think polls were well thought out. Um, it is not a lazy sieve at all. You know, they really thought it through. And they did a good job there. So hats off to the devs. And GG. Which prime I think it was. Do you call the villagers that are fishing fishing poles? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe.